What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time tuning in, I'm Car Guy 302, and this is a long term review of my 21 Shelby GT500 that you see right there. I've owned this car for two years and two months, so this is my thoughts, opinions, ownership experience over those two years and two months. So stay As tuned. As I mentioned, I owned this car for over two years. I bought it from the state of Alabama because my local dealer is a dipshit and tried to charge $20,000 over MSRP. That dealer, brain dead. I bought my Raptor out of state, I bought my GT350R out of state, and I bought my GT500 out of state. You wanna know why? Because they're retarded and they tried to charge way over the asking price. And what's funny is uh, people actually pay it, which is crazy. All you gotta do is shop around just a little bit and you're gonna find a dealer that doesn't charge over MSRP or a lot less. I picked this up in the state of Alabama for MSRP. Had it delivered to my house. There she is. I mean, that was over two years ago. So here's my thoughts. I, this isn't about like, you know, the how the cooled seats function. And well, this car doesn't have cooled seats because I got them badass Recaros in there. But either way, this isn't to go over the details. This is my ownership experience in over two years. Some of you guys are gonna say, you only got 6,000 6, miles on it. How, like how detailed of review can it be? But guess what? 6,000 miles of track driving on the road course, drag strip, back roads, family trips, I've owned this car for a while, so I got an idea of what to expect. Um, we haven't had any problems. The only thing I had to do is change the oil. I changed the front brakes, because as you know, tracking the car is hard on the brakes, and we did have a supercharger pulley failure. Made a video about that when I was at the road course. No big deal, covered under warranty. But um, let me get this camera turned around, kind of go over some of the things, some of the features of the car, give you my thoughts as we walk around, so stay tuned. All right, here she is lowered on those Steeda Springs with the Shelby wheels. That my friends, is an iconic American muscle car, sports car, whatever you want to call it. It's a badass car. Take a look at that front end. This car got PPF installed on the entire front clip, the roof, the mirrors, the rocker panels, everything to protect it because we knew we were going to be tracking it. It's gorgeous and all black. I think the color is called shadow black. We have these giant red Brembo brakes. Let me pop the door and show you the interior. That's held up very well. We have the Recaro seats, which is a must in my opinion. The heated and cool seats are nice, but because I tracked the car, this was a must have. The carbon fiber dash is a must have for me. Steering wheel held up well, as you guys can see. Door panel, no issues. The paint, let's take a look. Again, I have PPF. Shout out to Nick Oaks from Oaks Detail. He's the guy that I go to to get my cars protected. As you can see, no rock chips, but that's what we expect, and that's the reason we get PPF. I mean, if you have a car that you care about, go ahead, spend the money, get PPF. What I find funny is people will spend the money for ceramic coating, but they don't have the car. Uh, they don't put PPF on the car. It's like, well, what's the point of that? Like, if you're going to get it ceramic coated, you should get PPF on it to protect that beautiful shine and that beautiful paint. Let's walk around the back of it. I mean, take a look at this thing. There's no bad angles. I mean, she's wide in the hips, just like I like my women. Yeah, buddy, she's a sexy girl. This car is equipped with the handling package, so you get the gurney flap that you see here on the rear spoiler. And you also get these front canards right there. That's also an addition if you have the handling pack. So overall, the paint's held up well, the interior's held up well, the motor is an absolute monster. I don't think you can find a car that compares to the GT500 for the money. I had a red eye charger power-wise, and looks I think are comparable, but guess what? GT500 will smoke it in the handling department. There's no comparison in the braking department. And looks are subjective. You tell me which one looks better. You guys think the GT500 looks better than a charger? especially a red eye wide body charger. I don't know, that's a tough call. Two completely different cars in, in a lot of ways. One's a four door, one's a two door. I mean, what do you guys think? Does this look better than the Challenger? I mean, I'm sitting here looking at it and I'm going, yeah, buddy, it sure does. Hand built motor. Um, you know, that's a shame that that went away. As you guys know, they closed the Romeo niche line, so no more hand built GT500 motors. Will this car make a return in sometime in the future? 
I don't know. I mean, the performance is unreal. This car went 1050 at 133 miles an hour. I'm going to drop some videos of my quarter mile runs down below, so check that out. Let's jump right to it. I saw those runs of this GT500 bone stock running 1050 at 133 miles an hour. That thing's no joke, man. And to think that some people would prefer an electric car over something like this, what? You got to be out of your mind. This thing's phenomenal. After two years of ownership, I still love the car. I still love the looks. And, you know, as, as I'm starting to own it a little bit longer, I'm thinking about modding it. I mean, the warranty is not really that important to me, except for the fact that I tracked the car on a road course. And you never know, right? You have an engine failure. That thing's not cheap to replace. But either way, man, this car has been phenomenal for over two years. Still looks good, sounds good, performs flawlessly, and I absolutely love it. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Take care. See you in the next one.